look, it's freezing. Yeah, I'm now understanding why everyone has clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to where? It's fine. Oyster farming does not stop after summer ends. I need to be grabbing these at the top, yeah? You're doing great. <laughs> it's cold, it's snowy, it's icy. I have about four layers on and I still can't feel my feet. And we are out here seeing what it takes to farm oysters through the winter. Worth it? Tell me about Nunsuch. Nunsuch is a small Maine oyster farm and we're doing between half a million and a million oysters a year. On our farm we basically have three oysters. We have the Nunsuch oysters which are started in gear during their first year and then the second year we put them on the bottom. And then we have the Abigail Pearl oysters which we start in gear on the top and we continue to grow in uh, gear on the top through their lifetime. And what's so interesting and exciting to me about our farm is that the Nunsuch and the Abigail Pearl pearls are the same species and just by virtue of that second year difference in how we grow them we're producing two totally different oysters and then we have these balan oysters which are wild so we're going to take you out in the boat and we're going to show you the farm and harvest oysters a few different ways we drag for oysters and then we also have oysters and gear and we will sort through those so what are some of the challenges of winter oyster farming? Some days this area gets so impacted with ice that literally the boat becomes an icebreaker and we just slowly ram our way up the river. Right I can't wait location. to get out there and see all three. I can't wait to put you to work. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. Okay, hold on. We're gonna get her to go down the ladder of death. It's high tide, so it's not scary. What the hell is the ladder of death? Well, <laughs> all right. Let's hope I don't trip over my pants. Well done. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> All right, I made it. That High was five. <laughs> well done. <laughs> you could do some glam poses on the bow if you want. Well, it just looks fabulous like this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so when we drag, we're using this dragger right here. Okay. Now we're going to be moving and you're just gonna let it sink down. Oh my gosh, this is making me nervous. I feel like my feet are gonna get tangled up in this line or something. One time <laughs> falling in and you'll figure it out. Oh, great, all right. We're gonna so, get going and you are gonna- Let me know when to drop. Do it, we're ready. Oh, we're ready. Yep. Go forward pretty slow. There you go, just like that. Yeah, you got it. Now just toss that over, perfect. And now wait for the jolt. There it is, and we're dragging. Great, now you can turn it off. Perfect. So yeah, now the best thing to do is take this, we put the teeth right on the side of the boat. Now let's just slide it down the rail. Oh. So yeah, that's the less lifting, the better. Yeah, I'm feeling that. <laughs> All right, so lift. And shake them out. What's the most interesting thing you've picked up? Sunglasses that I lost. Oh, nice. I'm still waiting to get some of my <laughs> iPhones back. But. So these are uh, floating gear. All the lines in this area are named in alphabetical order after superheroes. So we have Ant-Man, Batman, Catwoman. We need to pick up all the bags of oysters out of here and keep track of how many we have. Okay. So these are the Nunsuch oysters that we're harvesting, the ones that we've dragged up from that reservoir. Those in the purple bags are Abigail right. Pearls and they're grown start to finish in these floating floating bags right here. Yeah. Well done. Just like that. So how long does it take start to finish to get them to this point ready to sell? We start seed in the summer and it will be the, the next fall before we have any of any seed ready. So it's at least a year. How many oysters are you bringing up on a daily basis? Right now we're doing about 10,000 a week. We've got a lot of oysters out there. We've got like two million oysters on the site. Um, Every bag has 101 or 102 oysters in it. Um, we always throw in one or two extras right. for good measure. That's, um, that's nice. And the then, old baker's dozen. What's the farthest you ship to? Manhattan. This is gorgeous. Yeah. So we're going to keep her here, rejects there. Okay. And petite here. These are good, beautiful looking nunsuch, so we're gonna put those here. Okay, and right. you're really looking for a sort of a three inch oyster. Um, <laughs> I think it's dead. But you're just 
Oh, it's hollow. And I could see that I just had the eye. What? <laughs> I had the eye, but. All right, so this is We're serious little, sorting. Yeah. High standards going on. Here. Yeah. These oysters are dead, but they still serve a purpose. They'll break down in the, in the river bottom and they will help mitigate ocean acidification. It's great to put them back on the, in the water because they're just filled with calcium. All right, so these are the pearls that we harvested. And we'll see that these look pretty different than the, the nun such that we've collected over here. What is the perfect one we're looking for? So here? this is actually a pretty, pretty typical looking pearl. It's just got a nice, consistent oblong shape here and a nice, decent cup. Should uh, we try some? Yeah, I think we should. These will be the lightest, the sort of the daintiest. Um, and those will be the hardiest, and they, the velas are definitely not for the faint of heart. They are incredibly meaty, they're very salty, and they have a metallic um, taste to them. Some people equate to licking an aluminum pail. What? <laughs> they are okay. also considered a delicacy. You can always see that the meats are different in the sense that, um, see the little brown edges on this right. one? Um, and that's and this is sleeker and this is meatier. Same species, I would guess that they're about the same vintage. Mm -hmm. Bottom surface. All right, it's time. So this is the pearl. Oh my gosh, salty. Yeah, from the surface. Yep. And this is the emerald. Yeah, the none such emerald. Yeah. None such emerald. So those came off the bottom and they should be a little earthier and sweeter. A hundred percent exactly that. Sweeter. So this is the Balan, the meatiest, right? <laughs> Saved it for last. I can't wait to see your reaction. <laughs> oh my gosh. It comes at the end. Yep. A little bit Slow of metallic. Finish. We're having warmer winters, shorter winters. How is that impacting this business? Well, in the short term, it's making it a little easier, to be perfectly honest. We're getting winter <laughs> growth. You can see these like thin lips are still coming out here, and it's it's the middle of the winter. That that so that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, that's okay. pretty new growth. But with that is coming a lot of problems. In certain areas in the south, they can't harvest in the warm months because of the uh, prevalence of diseases that are either harmful to the oysters or harmful to people eating the oysters. And Maine, for now, still remains relatively clean of most of those problems, but we're all sort of looking south and seeing what's going to happen. What I'm very happy to see with these two oysters is that they're really clean inside. There's not a lot of other coloring. That is the sign of like a, a, a happy oyster that's had a, a non-stressful life. I'm so excited about doing both these, the same species two different ways because I just think it's it's such an incredible expression of of nature and it, it shows how sensitive oysters are to their right. environment. It's but a it, living thing. But it also <laughs> has this huge environmental message which is wow look how differently they're reacting. Previously it was unfathomable to me that they could be that sensitive to their environment. And and it just makes me think about all the little ways that we're impacting the, the ocean without really thinking about it. All of these things are having a huge impact on our marine ecosystem. Whew. I can't feel my hands right now, but I can taste this oyster. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. You've been, been a great amazing. sport. Come back when it's warm. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more how to make it, click here.